<laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Hello, Internet. It's your friend, Boots Rain Gear. Again. Here we are at hour five, and all of us are still alive. A universe is what we've got to bring to you in this time slot. This one is a vanity press for novice author. That's not a word. For novice authors to express all of their awful thoughts. It's garbage day. Cha cha cha. <laughs> Yay! Silver Shamrock. <laughs> cha cha cha. Uh, welcome back, everybody. It's hour five of the F Plus Garbage Day Marathon. Beautiful day here on the internet. Uh, uh, everyone is gathered to hear some terrible things read with enthusiasm and taking the field now. We've got uh, we've got uh, kumquats up. Uh, Hello. And uh, French toast. Uh, Hello. And uh, Portax. Hello. Boots Rain Gear. Hello. And I'm your announcer, Jimmy Franks, here in the announcer's booth. Uh, uh, we are going to be visiting. Uh, I'm going to stop doing that. Fucking annoying. Uh, we are going to start. <laughs> we are doing a document called iUniverse, uh, thanks to uh, Sham Bam Bamina, who uh, compiled this and is also my favorite uh, doo wop lyric. Sham Bam Bamina. We are going to do. <laughs> Uh, some vanity press shit, and I do uh, want to emphasize the word shit because it is shit. Uh, there are a lot of different categories, you know. The pretty shit. much, the the pantheon. The, 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 this is the canon of of shit shitterature uh, mm. or shit lit. Uh, we're gonna do. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna touch on science fiction, fantasy, humor, in quotes, uh, romance, and uh, and more. Uh, well, let's uh, start off with, um, I think, you know, uh, science fiction, which is which is a category that we, we can all uh, uh, enjoy. Boots, mm -hmm. uh, give us a taste. Oh, and, and so these are, I think these are kind of like the, the book jacket synopses of, oh, of what you could yeah, expect yeah, yeah. if you did uh, visit iUniverse.com and, and purchase these these tomes. Just the, the, uh, the wanna... teasers to get people enticed to buy. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're, you're in the airport. You're about to fly to Thailand for some sex tourism. You need something to read on the on the plane. Uh, you want to grab something. So uh, tell us about Carl Sheffield's The Staff of Ira. Okay. The we're, beginning. I'm going to transform you. I'm going to teleport you to a magical world. Yes. Set the table. Paint a picture. <laughs> <laughs> to The Staff of Ira. The beginning. A long time ago on the planet of Boldly. <laughs> like, I like a planet that's an adverb. <laughs> <laughs> a race was on the verge of extinction with little hope left to find a way to stop it. The oh, leader they should boldly go then. Mm -hmm. Aha! The leader and his scientists tried taking DNA from other species on the planet to create a new life form. A new life they did create, yet it was not acceptable. The scientists told the leader, a female we must have. This statement brought many questions as to how or where the only females on the planet were infertile as they sat and pondered as to how they would come about such females an idea occurred let's build a ship said the scientist to carry us to other worlds in search of a female uh, end what what was the new <laughs> life they made <laughs> um, scrapped it immediately. Yeah, <laughs> check this in the trash bin. Uh, oh, uh, I would be remiss in uh, not mentioning we've got the Vilas on the stylus, uh, the Wizard of the Bamboo Tablet, uh, Lady Frenzy uh, is uh, a drawing for us right now. Uh, so thank you. I don't Lady see Frenzy. any frenzies right now. Yeah. Well, uh, give it time. Give it time. Uh, uh, boots. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm no, sorry. Uh, uh, toast, <laughs> toast. The Toast we, Man. It's the Toast Man in the morning with, uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about Rain S. Chetdav's Flowers of Carnage. This is Rain S. Chetdav's Flowers of Carnage. <laughs> the Japanese newfangled regime publicized itself as a self-sufficient, self-sustaining entity, freed from Big Brother USA and the United Nations' fear of influence, asserting itself as an anti-Big Brother USA and aligning its military might with North Korea, China, Taiwan, and Russia. 
Mm, international intrigue. As a more severe, brutal blow to Big Brother USA and the United oh, Nations f- Armed Forces. Let's keep saying it like that. Like Taiwan, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the it's the American version. Uh, it's not the uh, UK Big Brother. It's the American uh, uh, Big Brother. Yeah, got it. The got it. Who's everything... Line Wars of 2085. <laughs> <laughs> but everything changed when Big Brother was renewed for another season. <laughs> Taiwan discharged the Western and the European military and civilian personnel from its soil, ending all interrelations. Communist China led its new military allies of Japan, North Korea, Russia, and Taiwan. <laughs> Have we established that enough already? Mm, yeah. In attempting to demoralize Big Brother USA and the UN military <laughs> forces, the Second Korean War Sonata forced its resonance into us with its proverbial rev- oh, reverberations my. of fighter jets, oh. air assaults, what? howitzer artillery rounds, helicopter gunships, rocket propelled grenades, machine guns, military weaponry of all sizes and types. Boom! Thump, swish, kaboom! Bang, bang, bang! Papa, papa! <laughs> and on and on and on. <laughs> Go <for the> dynamite. <laughs> this is like '60s Batman, pow! <laughs> uh, boots, boots. As a as a fellow uh, hard sci-fi fan, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I know that you appreciate uh, this next offering. Uh, Victoria Rose's "Into the Mystery of Life: Colon Crystal Chris Rose." Definitely not a Mary Sue uh, character there. Oh, I just happens know. to share the last name with the author. Wait, I'm going again? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did I say boots? I meant. I meant. Uh, everyone is boots. I meant everyone but Everyone boots. is boots today. You know, I'll take yeah. this one. I'll take this one. Uh, all boots. The Milky Way galaxy's gravitational forces are tearing apart the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy in which the planet Gareth resides. The space between stars and planets is generally so vast that when galaxies collide or are torn apart, planets are rarely damaged. However, Gareth just happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Watch just Planet Gareth annoys Planet Tim. <laughs> I wish Planet Gareth would pay his share of the rent. As the planet is being destroyed, three sisters, the sole survivors, prepare to leave. They agree to travel in one body, crystals. She takes their energy spirits into herself, reduces her body to radio light waves, and heads for Earth, arriving via sunbeam and materializing on the naked back of Mac Dakota, a.k.a. Alley Catmac. Uh, (laughs) What? Mm -hmm, You follow me so far? As Uh, Crystal tells us about Gareth, an older, more evolved planet, We learn why they had no government, no religions, no doctors, hospitals, crime, or jails. Why all male were hermaphrodites. Why their attitudes about sex and love were slash are unique. In other words, this sci-fi story is significantly more than a simple romance. Yeah, it's complicated and stupid for no reason. (laughs) (laughs) I would agree. Uh, there's wow. a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch more uh, sci- sci-fi stuff. It's very heavy in sci-fi. So if, if you're looking for something offbeat and unique, uh, definitely check out iUniverse. Uh, but we're gonna well, let's do one more and uh, come quad. Oh, yeah, uh, so. You are uh, Jonathan Barbera. Jonathan. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan. Barbara. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here all day. Yeah. Yes. What's the, what's the Hour, name of your book, Jonathan? Five of Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um, mm-hmm. um, yes this is my book Gor- gorgeous robot flesh all right it was an earlier hour <laughs> can a product be packaged and marketed in such an extremely appealing way that it becomes almost impossible to resist yes and when the consumers purchase this product Will there be any concern if the buyers then use the product excessively and to the point of neglecting their other responsibilities? If such an entertainment product was so attractive as to be practically addictive, will the product manufacturers be held accountable or will the buyer beware? Oh, this is about Happy Meals. (laughs) (laughs) I I had intended to... depict the labor situation in the world today. However, as the work progressed, it became less about supply and demand. Instead, this just happened. Uh, Instead, it became transformed into a degraded novel about the sexual obsession of a small number of people for robots. 
Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. It has become synchronous erotica for robot fetishists and futuristic technology ne'er do wells. <laughs> oh, those r- technological rapscallions. <laughs> Get off my lawn, you futuristic technology ne'er do well. <laughs> to the brig with you. The nature of this work is speculative friction. For go- gorgeous robot flesh, I have set aside questions such as why are we here? Or where is consciousness located? Or why the hell did I write this? <laughs> yes, I replaced it with why should I fuck this robot? Uh, <laughs> That's a good favor, question. I, in I, favor I, I of do like questions. that it really sounded like Kumquat said speculative friction. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lots of really risky investments in friction. Uh, <clears throat> in favor of other questions like what should we be doing now that we find ourselves here? Fuck robots. And how can the largest number of people be directed through mass media alone? The possible answers are <clears throat> sometimes startling to behold. Uh, cool. I don't yeah. know what that means. But... Far out, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was, I was, star- I was startled. Hang on, I, just, I get, my mind just got blown. I gotta, I gotta wipe it up off of the linoleum. Um, <laughs> but you know, you know, we're gonna move, we're gonna move from uh, sci-fi to a uh, simpler time. Maybe more of a sword and sandal, sword and sorcery. Some maybe a dungeon, maybe a dragon. Uh, wow. Fantasy, fantasy, another Ooh. genre very popular uh, right now with the the throne game. What uh, boots? I love the throne game. <laughs> I like when Snow John defeats the darkness. Yeah. Boots. Yeah. Uh, you're Mohan v- Vele. Uh, yeah, Mohan page- Mohan Vele- a, page- a real page turner that you want to share with us? Yeah, yeah. My book's called Naked in a Sandstorm. <laughs> What's the name of this book again? <laughs> it's called. Isn't Naked. it ironic? <laughs> Naked in a think? sandstorm. We don't have a sandstorm uh, thing, so I'm just going to play this one. <laughs> That's an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I got a problem with my sound card, where my uh, every five seconds a uh, a thing asks me if I plug my headphones in. Oh God. Okay. Hey, look, Mohan. We don't have time to hear about your sound card. All right. I want to let's get to this. Let's get this like bu- sand in your butt crack nudity. Okay, like, okay. I hate sand. More butt sand. I guess I just more butt okay, sand. Sorry, I can't use that monitor anymore, so I have to, I have to turn my head sideways while I read. All right. Um, ancient cities, magical powers, sages with extraordinary powers, and bigger than life warriors. This is a story of courage. A saga of fighting the odds, of living a life of empowerment, naked in a sandstorm, will take you deep into your soul as you read. This is the story of great battles, mystery, and truth. You will rediscover yourself as you follow the hero, Avmon. No, uh, he is. Spell does backwards spelling Star Wars name. Yeah, okay, all right. Got it. Avamon. He is oh, like okay. you. He is you. You what? will oh, be. Ah! <laughs> well, I did not. This is an unlicensed... was in our hearts all along. <laughs> this is an unlicensed autobiography. Uh, I, you'll be hearing from my lawyer. <laughs> He's bursting out of your chest right now. <laughs> You will learn to harness the powers of the metaphysical as you follow the great sages that are also unpronounceable. <laughs> Morihi, Mor- Ananda, and Charaka. Yeah, Moriha, Morihe, Ananda, Charaka. You will fight great wars with the brave. Lust, love, and sacrifice is part of human nature. <laughs> Just Na- let us know that in the middle of the paragraph. <laughs> By the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's, let's not pretend this is a novel. <laughs> Naked in a Sandstorm is about those two. Meet the terrible Cormy. He will make you, he will make you loathe him. That's a dumb name for a villain. I'm the terrible Cormy. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm the terrible Cormy. Yeah. Oh, Cormy. <laughs> what? Ooh. Oh. Holy mackerel. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, 
That's a, some money. Uh, Muffin Butler. Uh, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Are you a butler you, too, Muffin? Muffin Butler? Are you a butler who is a Muffin? Uh, I think it, maybe it's Muffin Butler. Um, oh, one who Muffin <laughs> Buttles. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also thanks to Light Tai for $15. Uh, yeah. It says uh, pronounced Leotai, but I pronounced it wrong. Up yeah, Leotai. <laughs> Every, yeah, because every time we've ever said Leotai's name, we've always done it terribly wrong. So, it's a, it's a good precaution, and then we still do it wrong. Uh, <laughs> Naked in a sandstorm is about. Oh, sorry. Uh, and there is Apsara. You will cry with her. Get to know Kirtana, a woman uh, with burning passion and unbound love. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My Kirtana could use that kind of attention, if you know what I mean. <laughs> in a cave. Five miles deep in the bowels of the earth, you will discover what the future holds for you. Discover the mystery behind the sacred virgins. They all bought these books. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Were they naked in a sandstorm? <laughs> naked in a sandstorm will always tell and never show. Uh, okay, it's time for the F Plus Radio Theater players uh, to assemble uh, for this next uh, this next. <laughs> Oh. Next fantasy dra- dramatic uh, uh, performance. I'm gonna need. Oh, wow. I'm gonna need uh, Toast uh, as the narrator. I think uh, Come Quat will be the devil, and uh, Portax your McCluskey for McCluskey. In, in in a dramatic reading Let's... of Jug- Douglas J McGregor's Killing Time Till I Die. Ooh. You're one of my favorite Welsh punk bands. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so uh, and action. Last time, he was the Redeemer, and he redeemed three souls and found Hell's Codes for the Angel of Death. This time, McCluskey is Morningstar's dog, let off his leash to stop the horseman pestilence from unleashing a plague that will exterminate mankind. So, oh. Is McCluskey I? Oh, yeah, sorry. J- you're back, by the way. I didn't read that part. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jake McCluskey Jake is back. Is back. Yeah, so you're, is... you're, you're McCluskey. <laughs> you're the first one to read. That... Uh, protect your McCluskey. Yeah, but is it okay? <laughs> what? what the, but like, is there's one of the things is as I said is like is I refer to is the is the narrator I or is the narrator? Oh McCluskey? yeah, good question. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it is from the perspective of McCluskey. Yes. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is just just a good point. This is really yeah. what, this is a, a good portent for the rest of the book. Adapted <laughs> adapted for the screen by nobody. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Something. I said. I don't know what the hell it was. Blocked the hole. The devil's eyebrows twitched as he regarded me. His fingers moved, and a chair pulled away from the table. He opened his coat and sat. What did this thing look like? Uh, (laughs) Picture something. Picture something covered in black hair about the size of a dump truck with arms and legs and a head. <laughs> like dump trucks are want to do. It picked me up, sniffed me, and then tossed me halfway across the warehouse. All I have to say yet is yes. Ouch. With different quotes, I fucking sure. It sure hurt when I hit the wall. The devil sighed. Stop complaining. Do you have any more of that rat gut cognac? Because I need a drink. You knew this creature had to be bad when even the devil needed a drink. Think about it. I need a drink, too. (laughs) I climbed to my feet, my back and ribs aching. You drank all the cognac last night. I've got beers in the fridge. I hobbled to the kitchen, dug two cans of bud from the fridge, and plunked down his can in front of him. There you go. 24 ounces of bud. He sipped on his can of beer and grimaced. Why don't you have a little stocked liquor cabinet? Keep going, buddy. Uh, oh, no, <laughs> not quotes. Even, even do-gooder Catholics drink, and the missus has blown, so you won't get nagged, because you have a few bottles of hooch lying around. This is definitely what Satan sounds like. <laughs> Believable. I wasn't expecting company, and may I ask... How bad is this creature? <laughs> Let's just say this swell I'm drinking isn't making it. May I have clarification on how bad it is? 
<laughs> Anytime? I, is that no? Okay, <gasps> that's you. I guess because there's no quotation. <laughs> the word bad doesn't even come close to describing it. It's probably the worst case scenario you could think of. I took a hit of beer. I, I lit it up like a bong. <laughs> Thanks for sugarcoating it. <laughs> a team of bakery chefs could, couldn't sugarcoat this disaster. Thanks, Joseph. <laughs> do, you, do you know what crawled out of oblivion? I mean, aside from Luther. It's Mo. It's Mohana. I hate that movie. The devil said flatly. Mohana of the Chaos Hold. Oh, oh. I was afraid it was the. Wow, that was a Shyamalanish turn there at the end. <laughs> uh, riveting stuff. Riveting stuff. Well, they find uh, yeah. out what Mohana is. Will the devil finish his bud? <laughs> Will anyone care? Tune in next time. I was an angry Muppet, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, cool. So that's uh, that was kind of a genre bending uh, cross, uh, kind of a Lovecraftian fantasy uh, mystery. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's get into uh, more of the literary realm. You know, I feel uh, you know we're kind of it, we're we're breathing in the rarefied air of ivory tower academics. Uh, so I'd like to hand it over next to Boots, mm-hmm. uh, who is uh, standing in for Daryl Marcus and his uh, his uh, Bukowski esque uh, rambling. Uh, shit show, cigarettes and sunrise. Oh, okay. I was, like, I was like, I don't know how to spell Daryl or Marcus. So oh, there you oh. go. <laughs> Neither do I, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just like there's, there's so many options for all those. All right. Yeah. I'm Daryl Marcus, and this is my book, Cigarettes and Sunrise. I raise my mic. She's just sitting there drinking her coffee. She does not notice much of anything that's going on around her. Right behind her sits a man, possibly the love of a lifetime, only two feet away, and she does not even know it. He looks up from his book from time to time, and looking around in order to appear, uh, to appear not to be paying attention to her, taking a sip of coffee, staring at the blackness within, the mug, not his soul. And then finally, after appearances have been saved, looking her way in the end and back down to his book again. Chance, it calls to you daily. What a waste. You know, they say, write what you know, and this guy <laughs> totally knows being alone. <laughs> and <having some> friends. <laughs> what am I doing with myself? What am I aiming towards? What do I want to do? Is there really a point to this? All these things I do? Mm. I just like to point out that was a single question. <laughs> there was... <laughs> <laughs> that was that was just a bunch of commas in there and then a question mark on the end because you know that's how writing works just picture him grabbing somebody by the shirt lapels and shaking them like tell me <laughs> god damn it tell me <laughs> what am i doing with myself what am i aiming towards probably not but it will all be okay all i need to do is stop every now and again stop and just pay attention getting up from my seat I, my voice has totally changed since the beginning of this place in the mug i have been drinking from the count from on the counter a smile to the barista, or whatever the hell they're called, I begin walking out the door. Hand me your money. <laughs> <laughs> Man drinks gonna... coffee and leaves the epic <laughs> journey. <laughs> That's like that was like uh, if if you took a far side uh, panel and just wrote <laughs> three thousand pages. Uh, good I feel stuff. Like the section about the mug. That's exactly what I want you to draw. Yeah. It's like the mug, not his soul. It's like, no, you cannot draw parallels or symbolism from this. <laughs> I forbid it. Yeah. Uh, cool. So, uh, so you know, we're, we're not afraid of, of, of getting into the nitty gritty, uh, you know, hard, hard drinking uh, stuff. But, but there's a lighter side to iUniverse, too. And just I want to get a quick show of hands. Um, should we? Yeah, okay. Well, let's bef- before we move on to the next... Uh, Part. Let's check in on Frank West. How is Frank West? Let's go live now. Uh, live to uh, Frank West, who is oh, currently, hey. currently in uh, Bodologi. Uh, looks like you're <laughs> in the capital city there. Uh, what's what's happening down there on the street, Frank? Um, so what's what's been going on down here? It's just been pandemonium. People <laughs> running at right angles only. And <laughs> people, the it appears gun. it appears, Frank, that people are running uh, from you because you're wielding a gun and shooting at them. Is that correct? Um, to be fair, they are sometimes running at me and then deciding they'd rather run away from me and then changing their minds again. 
see, I see, I see. What is sense. what is the the mood in uh, uh, in uh, Bodoloki right now? Well, the thing is, uh, the mood is constantly shifting down here. It's pure chaos. As soon as you enter combat, uh, the music changes to one of four tracks, and as soon as you exit combat, the music also changes to one of four other tracks. <laughs> And uh, you can enter and exit combat sometimes several times a second, so the mood just sort of whiplashes all around. <laughs> and, and what are the traffic conditions right now in Bodologi? Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, 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 travelers and commuters that are trying to get to uh, their families' homes for the Garbage Day celebrations that are planned <laughs> later on. I mean, there's just... The garbage tree has to go it's, 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 it's really <laughs> slow going, honestly, because, you know... Uh, people are just encountering a door that they need to craft a key for, and then behind that there's another door that they need to craft a key for, just so they can loop back around um, to open another door that they need to craft a key for. And as you can imagine, like, uh, anybody who didn't make it to the shops ahead of time is really having a tough time getting home for those holidays. That, that sounds tiresome. Well, uh, better you than us, Frank. Uh, thank you for, uh, for being down there. Wait, was you doing this an option? Hello? <laughs> No, that's all. Uh, we're, we're, we're having a uh, we can't seem to reach Frank, so we'll have to check back in with him uh, very soon. Uh, uh, Frank West, uh, now uh, live in downtown Bodologi for Garbage Day. <laughs> that's where it takes place. Okay, uh, so we're back to iUniverse and uh, humor, right? Oh, show of hands, uh, everybody. Uh, who loves hearing authors self-describe how hilarious their humor books are anyone oh, me That's me I didn't yeah. everyone likes yes. it the, oh everybody loves it right it's the whooshing like, sound you hear is my hand zooming up past my microphone I because believe. everybody <laughs> knows that like it's funnier when you tell someone how funny a thing is it it, it magnifies well, how, the humor how jimmy franks how else will they know it's funny well, you know, uh, in the in the case of Brian uh, Byron Lanning's brain defying tales, uh, they will know by reading this hilarious collection of stories. Uh, in this hilarious collection of stories, Byron Lanning lampoons everything from art, religion, <laughs> ethics, politics, poetry to feminism and masculinism. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! How irreverent! Thanks, James Arnold uh, Taylor. <laughs> he makes the absurd seem preposterous. <laughs> it's a hypertext novel that injures its readers when they click on the hyperlinks. <laughs> what the? Oh I can relate to that. <laughs> a woman orders a red velvet bomb recipe at a convention of paramilitarists, survivalists, and insane Boy Scouts. <laughs> That's all capital. <laughs> She thinks it only costs nine dollars and fifty cents, but it actually costs nine hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Decimals. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my on my sides, they're splitting. Oh mm. best uh, Congress see. money come by. <laughs> <laughs> a Hasidic gangster, Jaime Day of Atonement Spielman, <laughs> attempts to take mm. over the bagel industry in New York City. Oh, oh uh, man. That... Oh, boy. I can't Ooh. find a plot hole in that book. Uh, casual racism, am I right? Oh, wild voila, fusillade. Who works with firearms invents the school of abstract percussionistic art? <laughs> the rooster caca dude searches for an eerie suppository with magic healing powers to cure his dying father. <laughs> the mega fascist. <laughs> His father, the mega fascist dictator of a pop psycho Arcadia, <laughs> Tan Hoosier, a slam poet from Indiana, develops a new form of poetry called appropriation that raises the wrath of the poet laureate, and he threatens to take away his poetic license. <laughs> what the fuck was he? <laughs> <laughs> Buy, act now and you'll get the the Criterion collection of Dorf on Golf. <laughs> oh, that read like an elevator pitch where the elevator was stuck and he just kept going. All right, how about this one? Ooh, he just tries the doors open and jumps out. I but a, oh. <laughs> Guys, I am lightheaded from from all of that uh, that uh, jocularity. I'm going to have to hand this over to uh, Toast, who's going to oh. tell us a little bit about Mark, Mark Gaberman's The Complete. Oh, well, you do it. You do it, uh, Mark. Uh, take like, it away. <laughs> hey there, I'm Mark Gaberman, the completely guilty bystander, a collection of casual observations, and one seriously dysfunction dysfunctional family. 
After reading Whitman's Leaves of Grass, Robert Louis Stevenson called it a book which tumbled the world upside down for me. Stevenson died in 1894, so we can only imagine what he might have thought of the completely guilty bystander. Perhaps after leaping through stories such as Grace Jones in the Garden of Eden, playing doctor at the reception, or Mortal Kombat with a paper pillow. Well, you're not laughing. Uh, Mr. Stevenson's view of the world might once again have spun dangerously out of control. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Maybe Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde would have mentioned the hidden but surprisingly possible benefits of organized crime to the community. Or the desperate lengths a man will go in the course of trying to get his phone service reconnected. I, Am I right? I, I, I mean, phone service is pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that thing. It's always around me. <laughs> the world can only be left to wonder if he even would have added a section on anger in everyday life and how they could relate back to TV's The Incredible Hulk. Of course, <laughs> I, if Robert Louis Stevenson read these stories today, he'd be about 150 years old. So, really, that <laughs> act alone would have been very impressive. Oh, 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 you, oh, oh, I, oh so oh, you're such a treasure, Mark Gaberman. Yeah, Thank you so Robert much. Robert Louis Stevenson is my favorite comedy trope. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, you slip goodness. on the banana peel and then crash into <laughs> Immortal. <laughs> yeah. Well, Portax, uh, let's, just, let's just close out uh, the, the humor section. Uh, with such a rant, this guy is so random. This guy's uh, pretty random. <laughs> Nicholas Barnes. Uh, what's the name of his book? <laughs> uh, this is my book, Thresholds. Oh, all right. You guys ready for some thresholds? Yeah, let's hear okay. all about it. <laughs> all right. So, so are we insane? Yes. And what? What? Yes. You said we were insane. Yes. Yes, we're insane. You asked we were insane, right? And and yes, we're insane. Jesus, Bob. <laughs> I'd just like to point out the Lady Frenzy's art is properly capturing the comedy of the situation. <laughs> Why don't With emojis. We have, how did we not get crickets on the soundboard? <laughs> Who wrote this? Wait, we have crickets twice on the soundboard. I don't see it. Where is it? Oh, wait, somebody deleted crickets. Uh, oh, no. It was so funny. <laughs> it deleted the crickets. <laughs> crickets. <laughs> All right, look, guys. You know it's all—it's not all fun and games at iUniverse, and you know they're not afraid to um, uh, to look inward. And I think uh, this is a good opportunity for all of us to ask the hard questions of ourselves. So we're going to head to the psychological section of uh, oh, iUniverse because oh the unexamined the unexamined life is not worth living. I believe it was Madonna who uh, who said that. Um, I think so too. So boots. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's hear about the the the. Power, power couple Deborah <laughs> Shilin Schlian and Joel Schlian and their book Double Illusion. Yes, I'm De Deborah Schlian Schlian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Joel Schlian, uh, Double Illusion. Every parent's worst fear is coming true. Someone is kidnapping babies. Cut, print, you're done. Good. I've already sold. <laughs> Someone with icy blue eyes who leaves behind a blood red trail of lipstick notes. From Atlanta to Los Angeles, a young reporter and the beautiful nurse he loves are putting each deadly piece of the puzzle into place. But the baby snatcher stalks. Uh, down a deserted hospital corridor uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. in a darkened mm. tenement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And with every step, Victor and Anne take toward the truth. A terrifying <laughs> secret waits. The babies are kidnapping her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a twist. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Cabal has found hey. their first victim. Hey, hey, spoiler alert, huh? Come oh, on. I'm, sorry. Give, give, I'm so give sorry. Us a warning before I you. Thought, I thought everybody read term. it. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Oh, man. oh no. Poor form, sir. Uh, for, and for that, uh, your, your penance is uh, for us to jump ahead to the romance section, uh, where this is uh, Nat S. Linden has just released his latest. Uh, turgid pot boiler. Uh, <laughs> we want to hear all about. How, how did you know my alternate screen name? <laughs> turgid pot boiler in fate is a four letter word. 
Uh, tell us all about that. What's the full title of that book? Well, the full title of that book is Fate is a Four-Letter Word, Agony and Ecstasy on the Potomac. <laughs> the, the most romantic and sexy setting. Yeah, yeah just, a, just a political a political thriller. You guys, what if Aaron Sorkin wrote some, wrote some romance? Good stuff. <laughs> I just like to point out that uh, username ooh, Etrius Alonso uh, says that drug pressure baby has expanded his cri- crime empire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> branching out. A critical satire on federal executive employees in an authentic Washington D.C. background. Jason Kane is in a life or death struggle to save his career job in the federal government plus his private love life, which indulges his beautiful mistress, his alcoholic wife. His spinster mm-hmm. secretary and a malevolent midget. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, bingo. Bingo. I got a bingo over here. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he's playing the weirdest dating game. <laughs> the weir- weirdest dating game I've ever heard of. Okay. You get an inside view of the power players you never see who play both sides and can tear asunder lives and careers. Overwhelming, passionate love fights desperately to stay alive with the shadow of the phallic Washington Monument. <laughs> oh, as opposed to the other one. That monument's wrecked. Just like my dick. <laughs> the so, is it just in, does this all take place just in the shadow? <laughs> he's, a uh, very, yeah. he's a very specific vampire. <laughs> he's like yeah. the shadow of the Washington Monument. Yeah, as, as, the, as the sun goes through its orbit, they have to like run circles around the Washington <laughs> Monument to stay in the shadow. Uh, well, no collection of of uh, speculative fiction would be, or speculative friction would be complete without uh, <laughs> pa- paranormal fiction. Uh, and oh. uh, this one's a, kind of a like a, a futuristic historical document. Uh, Amy Barrent's Paranormal World War Three, and I believe Ooh. Vortex. You this is this that's what you majored in uh, in college, right? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure fu- I majored fu- futuristic. in futuristic. Futuristic historical fiction. Yeah, it was a uh, I it was a triple major in paranormal world wars and threes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, then tell tell us all about it. Uh, paranormal world war three. Uh, while being played by a date he had, he finds himself being sent to the army base to help the army fight a war and find some paranormal activity. <laughs> all right, I'll let you off with a warning this time. <laughs> He was having so much fun with it until something scary happened to him more than one than once. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Uh, how could I predict that. these spooky things would happen during my paranormal world war? And then a skeleton popped out. <laughs> was, is that a Zarlin one guy in Filmation Ghostbusters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does he want to know what's going on or just try to leave before it's too late and he can't? Does uh, I don't know, maybe. All he knew was that it was started when he went to shore to do something filming an old warehouse that was haunted. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Checks yeah. out. And there he finds something that would scare anyone. But he doesn't leave alone or empty-handed. All he knew when he left was he wanted to do something about it. Mm. Yep. Let's go <laughs> Ghostbusters! <laughs> the vague Dresden Files. Yeah, the, the truth is... That- the truth's just going to have to remain out there. <laughs> All I know uh, is Bustin makes me feel good. <laughs> that's the wrong Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we, we would not be complete without uh, uh, dipping our toe in the pool of the action-adventure genre. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Kumquat, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're Mike Danford. Uh, what's, the name am... your, what's the name of your book? I am Mike Danford. No sudden moves. Okay, all right. Nah. <laughs> I just like to bring oh, attention to the uh, to the book cover. Of this I'm gonna I'm gonna put it into the stream. Oh yeah, you really should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's well, yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. good book cover. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> no sudden moves. <laughs> A man intruded into the world of the grizzly bear to gain information about the animal. <laughs> <laughs> the Hello, it me bear. No, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, is Mike is Mike Danford the name of the bear on the cover? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You like you like fish. Uh, I'm Mike Danford. <laughs> I bear. I like fish. <laughs> and he met one up close and real personal. 
she happened to be a peaceful, benevolent sort. You know, those ones. <laughs> yeah. the, of the teddy variety. We all know those ones. <laughs> I found and her allowed a, a friendly relationship to evolve on her turf and terms, and then she learned to talk. <laughs> wait, wait, that <laughs> happened after she learned how to talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the terms and all that happened before she could talk. Yeah, she really learned Body how language. to. She really learned how to bear her feelings. Yeah. Can a bear Yay. learn how to love? He found that he had. No, he found that she had. Oh, surprising emotions. Uh, uh, in addition crazy. to the ability to think and reason. Oh no! Yeah, we're dancing perilously close to wolves. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> When it became necessary to terminate the relationship, <laughs> hmm. the man you need to see other bears <laughs> suffered considerable emotional duress. But he never even once guessed the emotional agony he left behind. Baby, I'm a man. You're a bear. You're I have out. a complaint to make about the sound <laughs> about the soundboard. Where is Bear Force One? <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of shit in that I like uh, action adventure <laughs> category. Let's move Close on enough. to kind of our 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 uh, our Brock's pick a mix of of topics. Uh, miscellany. Um, I'm gonna take uh, Sophie Burnham mm -hmm. uh, and her latest. Uh, uh, just, just, I mean, this has got to be soon to be a major a major motion picture, starring Denzel Washington. I guess I, I would put this is like a Denzel action flick, right? Oh yeah. The Dog Walker. <laughs> <laughs> the Dog Walker is the story of a passionate little girl who gets a job walking the dog of the Secretary of State. When the terrorists steal the dog to plant a bomb in its collar to blow up the Secretary and the Geneva Peace Talks, it's Cocky who must save the day <laughs> and the world. A love story and a dog story. Could you not just take the collar I think <laughs> is Lady Frenzy drawing the uh, the altered beast power up bear animation. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> power up. No sudden <laughs> movements. <laughs> oh boy, uh, boats! I know you are a Beatles super fan. Did you call me boats? Uh, boats. Okay. Boats yes. <laughs> yes. That's how you pronounce boats, it. Canada. Boats. Boat. Boats. Raising guard. Yeah, that uh, was. Yeah, that, uh... was that vote last year that everybody decided to be call me Boaty McBoat Gear. <laughs> <laughs> the internet, huh? Wacky. <laughs> All right. Uh, boats raising guard. You are uh, Tom uh, Marinara, and uh, <laughs> you have got a a stirring, uh, poignant uh, story to yeah. share with us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is my book called. I'm I'm Tom Marima. And my book's called Imagined. Mm -hmm. Imagined is a heartwarming, poignant novel about the return of a man who either is or is not John Lennon. <laughs> I think huh. that's well, I, I, Technically, that is true. <laughs> when you uh, think about it, we're all either <laughs> or yes, not either. John Lennon. We really, we really, really need a void comp test for who is and who isn't John Lennon. <laughs> Can we take a, a quick poll in the chat? Who, who in the chat is John Lennon? Who in the chat isn't John That's Lennon? Actually, going to be a question on the 2020 census. <laughs> are, the, the question is: Are you or are you not John Lennon? <laughs> um, yes. No. Maybe. <laughs> The famous beetle, whom the world thought was assassinated in a cold, dark night in December some 20 years ago. The man who wakes from a coma in his hospital bed speaks in Liverpool dialect. <laughs> right. And sings Beatles songs is truly an original creation. Wait, what? Yes. Uh, the man? I I totally ignored the opportunity to say Liverpudlian. <laughs> he takes on a world that wants to believe, and in less than a week takes us on a magical journey from the madness of New York City at Christmas to the hippie heart of San Francisco. You know that thing that still exists? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> San Francisco John Lennon as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 like uh, it's like playing Pokemon Go. You can see it right next to the Twitter office. 
um, and even a sudden leap from the Golden Gate Bridge. In the end, Imagined brings us the real promise of a Beatles reunion and delivers a message of hope, love, and reconciliation. I, just, I hate it. I hate it when these yep. trailers give away the whole plot. I just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, guys, guys. Oh, shit. Oh, I am so sorry. Uh, you know, I don't host a lot of these, so uh, you'll have to forgive me because I totally buried the lead. We've got a poetry section. Oh, uh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, the chat yeah, so we're going to. Very seriously taking the John Lennon question, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, got quick poll. We, got, we got a quick poll. Uh, the 73% of our uh, listeners are saying they are, in fact, John Lennon. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's see. We're going to skip past a couple of uh, really long and self-indulgent uh, fiction pieces. We're just going to completely jump over the McGick section. I feel like we covered that pretty pretty comprehensively already today uh, before we move on can i just read one sentence from one of the sections here by richard oh, yeah. levitin for sure for sure it's from higher effect hierophantic landscapes lighting up chalice well lake tahoe yosemite for the rodanes and oxcata i think is how you say that mm. the earth is poised to make a great wow. disclosure it's a hierophant that's all all right cool yeah wow <laughs> all right man all right, wow man. i just uh um, sorry i'm just i'm just noticing lemons yeah. made some additions to the soundboard Oh, good. So, uh, so if if we need a ridiculous laugh, we've got. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Carr, Jimmy, Jimmy Carr, about to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, <laughs> boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am, I and I am talking to boots. Uh, this time, I'm. I would like okay. to speak to boots now. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh let me go get him. <laughs> Slam! Uh, you are Silva Portoy and Schleimer. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Oh, <laughs> Laurie, that's what I've been saying. <laughs> how do I? How is that spelled? <laughs> uh, you're the name of your the piece you'll be reading for us today is Lance. My heart at a glance. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That, that's glance, not glands. A, a dragon glance. <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm Silva Pertoyan Schuheimer. Isn't that what I said? <laughs> you know, you're right. You're right. I, I hit wrong. Control F and I started typing what? that in and what? somehow it just didn't work. Uh, yeah. And Lance, my heart at a glance. <laughs> Let tears of believers on human rights flow like water falls on starved lands. Whose are the hands try to catch souls, prevent to fly to indefinite cry, lancing tissues repairing, like to alive dying songs sanged. Sang. <laughs> they sang these songs. Perhaps sanged. Sang. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, far out, man. That was, uh, was beautiful. Okay, we got time. I think we got time for one more. We're going to have to probably speed through it. Uh, so... Kumquat. I'll Hello. give you a choice. I'll give you a choice. You got to chip off the old block or the tears of Alvaron, a journey through the imagination. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, old block. Chip. Chip. Block. All right. Old All right. Chip. Take it away. Take it away. You have the stage. And go. Aging only to 42 and counting backwards, a.k.a. senior with that extra bit of junior chocolate. Keeping it sweet, hard, nutty, and almost there while running the streets of cats and men. Mm, yeah. Like a clock on a deadline. Dateline. <gasps> Dante and Leslie. Know the names. Don't matter. Not like the labels from a life of sex. Chiseled in wax and five four meter jazz sax. Not like the constant introduction of Erotica 101. The hot spots of joy nursing Big Daddy. The Adam Sandler movie, Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Public I mean, to some concern, commercial result. Bump it, bag it, fill it up. Like Discord, musical bookends, down to Brother Eros Way, to where the X Factor transports you to Universal Maliaise, Maliaise, social, <laughs> ma social mayonnaise. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mayonnaise and malaise in and, and one. <laughs> now your mayonnaise posts to Twitter. <laughs> you got your malaise and my mayonnaise. <laughs> 
spreading euphoria and caring about everything to planet ZZ, where sleep is not for the tired, but new, found, unconditional love, and you come to like ugly, the number 13. Utilitarians with hair replacements because you are a born-again virgin, and it behooves you to jabber jaws in December or April, July, whenever, wherever, Tasmania, Transylvania, Brooklyn, with or without sex toys, because you epitomize patience in red, blushing to acceptance that it never hurt so good to be a chip off the old block. <gasps> oh my God. Oh, wow. You gave away the entire plot. <laughs> that's my favorite, uh, that's my favorite sitcom theme song. I mean, I, I, didn't, block. I didn't know we were doing another one of those Markov chain things, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, well, Boots, what, what are we doing here on time? Like, Oh, uh, we could probably uh, do our do our wrap up. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Because uh, I don't think we can top that. <laughs> I don't think we can top, top that. that. I said top. top I don't that. think we... There it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so you, know what, you know what the secret of comedy is? <laughs> timing uh cool wow. so what did we learn <laughs> that people write dumb yep. they pretty, think they, they, they um, think they smart but they write they write yep. dumb yep. um i, mean, I learned is... i i learned that i just can't bear this writing Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's it is true. It it just it just further proves that that old that old bromide about uh, putting a million monkeys in a room with a million typewriters and they write the complete works of Shakespeare. Eventually, you're also gonna end up with a lot of turds. <laughs> That's true. Monkeys wow. throw poop. Yep. Hey, uh, hey Victor, uh, what are your thoughts on this? The definitive answer provided by medical science to this enduring question is no. All right. All right. Yay! Thanks, Victor. Victor! <laughs> you know, we can we can uh, we could probably maybe look at uh, at uh, some uh, what do you call those uh, donations for 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 fast for fast. What do you call those things? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We got a donation from Rykarn that says, thanks for the stream. We got a donation from BD, BD for uh, $46.46 that says, your pal, John Lennon. Aw. Huh. Yeah. All right. Cool. What's yeah, the, and, uh, what, and, Muff, what, what? and Muffin Butler is the uh, the proud owner of a new fetish. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Wow. Nice Yay, work, fetish. Muffin Butler. Yeah, congratulations. We're going to bottle, bottle your muffin uh, Ooh. in four to Ooh. six weeks. I'd also like to point out that the donation total is seventeen sixty nine dot sixty nine. Yeah, that's so that, nice. That was that was the reason for BD's specific donation amount. So. I see. Good job. Yeah. Uh, John Lennon has nothing but taste. That's true. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, and on that note, we're going well, for break. Yeah. We'll yeah, catch you. Yeah. We'll catch you in a few more minutes with uh, hour number six, uh, where Lemon will be returning. Uh, John John Lemon, John Lemon. Uh, I'm actually me. I'm going on break. Adam Bozarth is coming in. So is Montreth. We're going to say farewell to Kumquat and Portex. We're going to run off together, Kumquat. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, a lot of yelling. Is. I think I'm also getting kicked out. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're I'm, also you're also I'm getting of, kicked out. I'm out of AOL minutes. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, top those up. Go. I I'll buy go. you more on my virtual machine. <laughs> I, I have to go to Western. I have to go to the Western Union kiosk and uh, and fax them a money order so I can join you guys later on tonight. Okay. Well, um, I I had to leave anyway whoa. because I have to walk uh, watch Frank West's butt. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. And lady friends will be back with a document that uh, she provided to us, uh, which is going to be weird. So. All right. Catch you in a few.